let's go with the sharpening. Three stones here. This is optional when you use either cheap blades or damaged blades or second hand blades that you may have got. Uh, this will be required to restore the edge, uh, to remove the bulk of the metal. And then our main working horse is this double sided stone, 600-1200 grit. And then we move up to the 4000 in the end to create the secondary bevel. After that uh, we've got uh, a leather stroke which you can buy uh, already made. Uh, I just made my own. Basically you get a piece of leather, glue it onto the block of wood, uh, grain up and then you charge it with a, a polishing compound. In this case I've got a green colored one which is a medium. Also you would need uh, some form of lubrication for the stones, either just a spray bottle with water or if you don't have a separate one you can use the window cleaner or combination of you can actually make a solution of soapy water by adding uh, window cleaner to the water or adding a little bit of soap there so that's pretty much all we need inspected the edge of this blade and it seems to be pretty good. I'll show a little zoom for you here. So it does not have any chips as such and it's re relatively good condition. So I will not be needing this stone for this blade. I'll just take it away. So we'll start with this uh, stone which is uh, 600 grit uh, diamond plate. And as you see, um, well this particular stone came with a non-slipping pad which you may want to get uh, just to avoid this stone sliding on your working surface. Uh, now let's talk a little bit about this jig. So as I mentioned before it is important especially for the bevel up planes, uh, bevel up blades uh, to, to have a precise angle on the top so that your presentation angle is consistent at 37 degrees or whatever your plane is configured to. So now for us to achieve that, uh, we will use this little jig here. Uh, they, they come from different manufacturers, this is like a, a sort of a cheaper version you can get from your store. Um, and what I've got here, what, what it has written on it, it actually gives us the measurements of protrusion of the blades to achieve a certain angle. So it says here for the plain blade, uh, by the way, this jig can also be used for chisels, so for example, if you have a chisel installed in this uh, lower position, uh, there will be different uh, measurements required to set up the angle on that. But for the planes, obviously the, the upper uh, shelf, if you like, of this uh, jig is used. Uh, and then uh, to set up the correct angle, I need to obviously put the blade down, uh, bevel down in, in this situation. So we need to measure off for, it says here, for 25 degrees we need to uh, measure 38 millimeters for 30 degrees and 50 millimeters for 25. So let's set it up for 50 millimeters now. So I'm basically taking the rule and I'm measuring from the edge of the jig to the tip of the blade, 50 millimeters. Okay, and then I'm tightening the jig. It also has the slot for the screwdriver, which you may want to use so it doesn't pop out. So secure the blade like that. And let's check. So basically I'm putting it on the surface of the plate. And I'm not sure if you can see, hopefully you can. Uh, it's pretty close, it's not super accurate, but as long as for, for, for me now, just to check that the back of the bevel is, I can see, slightly elevated from the surface, not the front, so that's the important part. Basically what it does uh, tell me is that when, I'm start, when, when I will start sharpening it, I'll be sharpening the edge rather than the back of the bevel, which is pretty much all I want. 
And so now uh, we 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 just need to lubricate the stone and start working on it. So let's take this away, and I'll just do a quick spray of a little bit of water here. And since I got this bottle available as well, I'll just spray a little bit of window cleaner. And so, um, as I mentioned before, A2 steel is pretty hard one, so it will take you know a couple of minutes maybe for me to go through each side of the stone. But it's still, uh, I guess, faster than to use any other types of stones in my experience to achieve the edge. And this, this stone has been in use for several years and uh, still working, so it's, it's not, uh, it's not going to work as efficient as the new stone and it's not going to remove that much metal, but it still works for me, so let's go. Uh, what, are we, what are we doing? We're holding the jig so it doesn't rock around. Uh, this jig has got just one narrow wheel in, 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 you know, in, in the center. So we need to control the blade by applying uh, hopefully equal pressure on both sides here, so both sides contact with the stone, and then I'm, I'm using my thumbs to push it um, forward, and then four fingers here to push it backwards. And so just gently sliding back and forth, trying to utilize the full width of the stone so it wears down evenly. You can speed it up <coughs> as long as you got uh, like a feeling that you're controlling the process. Now it's not falling off the edges. It's not. Um, it's not lifting any corners off. So you basically want an equal pressure applied across the edge of the blade. So as I'm going along, we can see that the particles of metal have started accumulating in the, in the liquid that we've applied to the surface of the stone. This is called a slur, and uh, you might be tempted to remove it straight away. However, as long as you're working on the same surface, as long as you're working on the same grid of the stone, uh, the best strategy is actually to keep it there for a little bit because this slur contains particles of metal but it also contains micro particles of the, of the diamond chips that can be taken off the stone surface so that effectively works as an additional medium for sharpening of the blade so let, let's see what happens now um, to see that Clearly, I guess we're just gonna clean it, and hopefully you can see the tip of the of the blade here has got the different uh, look to it. So this is exactly where we've done the work of uh, sharpening, and because as I mentioned, we haven't applied the bevel exactly flat on the surface, we're actually sharpening the top edge which I don't mind in this case because we did trust this particular jig for the angle and supposedly with the 50mm protrusion we should be getting exactly 25 degrees on this edge which is exactly what is written here on the blade what we need to achieve a standard angle on the bevel up so effectively right now we're actually correcting previously is slight, potentially slightly wrong if we trust this jig uh, angle and we're getting exactly 25 degrees on the edge and we're removing metal so pretty much uh, this is probably even enough for us to get a sharp edge and uh, I don't want to grind off the hole I don't want to change the geometry because it's actually in our favor at the moment I don't need to remove any more material from the back because the angle here is already lower than 25 degrees so basically now we can move on to uh, the next stage uh, of the sharpening, which is the 12, 1200 grit. 
And another feature, so another sign of all the, all the things going right is they actually, we, we started to get burr. So here we go, this is our blade that we just ran through 600 grit. And um, what I was talking about is, you know, I'm starting to get a burn, which is a good sign of sharpening, is when I slide my fingertip across the blade's edge from, and from the back end, I can feel that there is a bit of a hook. And so what's happened there is the particles of metal that have traveled of the main uh, body of the, of the bevel here, and they, uh, they effectively just hanging off the cliff they are still attached to the metal but they already feel uh, formed some sort of a film or it feels like a thin wire running across the edge of the blade so back to the stone reversed the stone to 1200 grit so again a couple of uh, sprays of water same jig same angle haven't changed anything basically just to put them straight up on the 1200 grit and continue the sharpening process so we're going uh, back and forth trying to use the uh, as much stone as possible sometimes it's uh, useful to turn the stone around uh, to make sure that you're using the other side by the way to save time another tip would be uh, just to have all your blades sitting here do each one of them on 600 so you don't have to spray and, and wipe the stone you know million times and flip the, uh, the stone over just just basically do several blades on one side turn the stone around do them all on the other side and just do just progress them all the way to the 4000 and then you're pretty much done yeah, that speeds up the process <music> Let's have a look. I can definitely feel the burr. It's slightly different feeling now because it's probably a different uh, grade of burr. This one is softer. And when I actually hook it up from the other side, you can see, I'm not sure if you can see on the, on the camera here, but you can see the light reflecting of the burr. So it's like a thin metal foil that I'm, I'm just uh, bending from the other side. Now it's actually broken off. Here you go. This is what I was talking about. It's a thin wire. So this is the real sign of the actual sharpening process in work. Ideally, this is what you need to get. So effectively now we, we can tell that the, the sharpening has gone all the way across the edge and we uh, we've used the 1200 grit. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, if you just start, and, uh, if you get this stone with 600 and 1200 grit, um, that's pretty much uh, as, a, as a beginning method is fine. So what I'm saying is basically once you've done the 1200, you can straight go to the leather and use the tool already. However, if you want to give it another level of sharpness, which you may want if you're working with hard or difficult timbers and especially for the block plants if you're working with the end grain you do want that blade to be super sharp so now we're moving on to the DMT stone which is 4000 grit it uh, already has legs so I don't need the empty sleeping pad for it uh, exactly the same scenario I'm just doing a little uh, water on top uh, possibly a little bit of soap there um, I'm not changing the angle for now, so I'll just do a little bit with exactly the same setup. So let's do it here. And you can see again the slur is turning black, which means the stone is removing material. The particles are much finer and harder to see. It, it almost looks like a black paint. Um, in this particular scenario so now that that should be enough however we did talk about secondary bevel and on this plan I'd like to put just a slight uh, secondary bevel um, so 
So how do we do that? And what I will do, I will set it up at 42 millimeters. And as we all know, 42 is the answer to the ultimate question. What is the meaning of life? And here you go, we just answered. So what's going to be happening now, the angle has changed, so the contact angle to the stone has changed and the back of the bevel is now more elevated and the angle on the actual cutting edge will be um, higher. So it used to be 25, now it's going to be around about 29, 28 degrees, something like that. So I'll just do a little bit, doesn't have to be... Um, a huge additional bevel there so I literally just done it for a couple of times and then let's see what if, if actually anything is happening there yeah we can see the secondary bevel which is right on the very edge of that is starting to develop so I'll do a little bit more so, so basically what the secondary bevel is doing on the bevel up plan is changing the attack angle or presentation angle, so we need to be careful about the, the angle measurement here. But another, and I suppose the main function of the secondary bevel in any case, is to make sure the edge of the blade gets the treatment of the very fine stone, because it is difficult to um, polish, I guess, the whole bevel of the, of the blade. It's going to take an awful lot of time. But if we are only working with a very thin uh, strip of, of metal, it's much easier to make sure that the 4000 grit gets onto the steel here. And I can see the secondary bevel is now around about um, half of the millimeter. That is, this is pretty much all we wanted. I'll check the burr. Uh, since I already broke the 1200 burr, uh, off the blade. I don't feel the hook anymore, but uh, there should be another burr developed from this stone, which should be very, very fine. And you can probably see it with reflection of light. I don't feel it anymore, but it doesn't mean that it's not there. I can see it now when I basically went across and I've pulled uh, the metal from the back side, it actually start, started to show up. So now, how do we remove it completely and make sure it's not on the blade when we start to work with the timber? Uh, we need to uh, polish the back of the blade a little bit. Uh, what I'm doing, I'm just reversing uh, the blade and I'm putting that straight on my stone here. Put, putting uh, uh, my finger, both fingers on top to maintain pressure, I'm just kind of sliding on the stone parallel to the surface. Um, notice that I'm not trying to polish the whole thing, just the tip, but still make sure that the edge is on the stone. So once we've done that uh, for a few seconds, I'm just gonna slide back, just do it like three times or something like that, to make sure that we don't have any hooks of burr at the bottom from the previous step and that's pretty much us done on the stone. Now let's move on to the leather strope and I'll show you how to work with that. So just before we get on to that, a couple of words about the leather strope. Uh, as I already mentioned, this is a homemade one. Uh, it's basically get a block of wood of approximately the size of your stone. Just literally glue a piece of leather on top. Uh, the leather needs to be facing the uh, inner side up, so you do have the, um, all the grain exposed on this side. The first step would be just to scrape off, I'm using the unsharpened side of the blade, just to remove the previous uh, compound from it. Can see the plastic there? Change the color. Um, the compound on this uh, strobe will also contain particles of metal which basically turns turn the surface into like a ice skating ring. We don't want that, we don't actually want that to just be, see, all this uh, old material has now been removed. 
So you just give, give it a clean every once in a while. So now I'm, I'm just getting a piece of the green compound and, and I'm literally rub it in like this. You can see the color is changing every time, so it's like a crayon. It changes um, substance. Changes color. Yeah. You don't need a lot, just make sure it's everywhere and it covers the whole area more or less evenly. That's all you need. So now our leather strop is secured in the um, leg vise of my workbench and we can just go through the finishing part of the sharpening of this blade. Um, basically what you need to do is just uh, set up the blade at exactly the same angle as we were sharpening it on the stone. So that, that's your angle that you need to work with. Uh, I'm holding the blade with two hands obviously just to maintain that angle as much as, as close as possible. So again it's like this and then I'm using the uh, the edge of my palm to apply pressure onto the edge. You need to be careful the blade is already quite sharp so don't cut yourself. Um, uh, maintain the grip here like this. The edge of my palm maintains the pressure across the edge and all the fingers are holding the blade like this and the left hand is, is holding the tip of the blade to help to maintain the angle uh, all the way across and then um, to hold the blade more securely. I'm doing roughly 30 strokes with this across the leather. So, one, two. So I wasn't really counting, but I think it's around about 30 of their abouts now. I can feel the blade slide slightly differently, so it looks pretty polished now. Um, you don't want to overdo it, because the what what's going to happen, because leather is quite soft, when you dig the blade in, um, this process actually rounds off the, the edge. So if you overdo it, you may need to go back to the stone and resharpen it again on the 4000 just to get back that really sharp edge all you're doing here is you're literally polishing the edge and removing any remaining burr uh, let's reverse the blade and keep the two fingers here uh, I'm pulling the blade across to actually uh, round off so uh, return any of, of the burr from the back on the front, so do a couple of times here and then the final pass maybe three or four times there. <clears throat> and that's pretty much it. That's whole of your process, pretty straightforward hopefully. Uh, you can see the blade is not mirror um, surface, so to get to the mirror surface you, you want to spend a little more time on the 4000 a little more time there but you don't have to basically uh, we'll test this uh, blade later on uh, but this is pretty much the edge that you can use for any, for any application in woodworking now